Have you ever wanted to attend New York Fashion Week as an influencer? From scoring invites to creating content, today I wanted to sit down and cover everything you need to know about attending New York Fashion Week as an influencer. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Austin and I am a fashion and beauty content creator based in New York City. I use this channel to help micro-influencers create great content for their digital brands and earn sustainable income from content creation. So if any of that interests you, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for new videos every Tuesday. I've attended New York Fashion Week for nine seasons, which is so crazy to say, and I've been lucky enough to attend presentations of designers like Cynthia Rowley, Christian Siriano, Tanya Taylor, Rebecca Minkoff, and so many others. I first got invited to Fashion Week when I was working as a magazine editor, but now I attend as myself, as a micro-influencer, and I cover the events and shows for my audience. So today I want to talk about getting invited, preparing for Fashion Week, actually attending the shows, creating content, and of course what to do after the shows are over. So you definitely will want to stick around and watch all the way through the end of this video so you have the full game plan as you head into this season. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first I just wanted to quickly explain what is New York Fashion Week for anyone who may be a little bit newer to it. New York Fashion Week is a biannual event that happens in both February and September where designers can show collections that they've designed ahead of the season that they are going to be selling them. So for example, we are heading into September 2022 Fashion Week, but we're going to be seeing collections for spring, summer 2023. I think the biggest thing to know about attending New York Fashion Week is that getting invited to shows is a privilege, it is not a guarantee, and it's up to you to communicate your value to these different brands and designers about why you should be attending these shows, because a Fashion Week invitation implies a trade. If you're getting invited to the show, it is because the designer wants you there, because you can offer them something like coverage or access to your audience or great content that they can repost to their social pages. So just keep that in mind. It's not just about getting to go and have fun at a fashion show, which of course is always amazing, but you really want to think about how you can give back to the designers that are putting quite a lot of time and money into curating these presentations and hosting their collection showings during New York Fashion Week. Now let's talk about getting invited and who to reach out to in order to actually attend these shows. I always think it's great if you have existing relationships with designers or PR companies. In general, most designers, at least in New York, are represented by a PR agency that will help field all different press requests towards that designer, especially when it comes to New York Fashion Week. If you want to know who is showing this season at New York Fashion Week, all you have to go is head to the CFDA's website and look for the Fashion Week schedule. That schedule will list all of the names of designers who are showing, and it'll also show you the time and the day that they are showing their collections. Designers typically show collections in two different formats. Some designers do traditional runway shows, and others will do a presentation format, which gives you a little bit more flexibility because they are not capped at how many seats they have for that show, and you can usually come and go within a one or two hour period, so you don't have to worry about being exactly on time, the same way that you do when a designer is hosting a runway show. Now, in terms of finding the contacts for these designers, the first thing I always do is go to that designer's website. Often at the bottom, they will have either a press page or a contact page, and on that page, they will usually list the email for any PR or press requests. Some designers will also even have a specific email for New York Fashion Week pitches, which makes your life much easier. In terms of when to reach out and pitch for shows, I typically recommend starting your outreach about three weeks before the event. You want to get that request in early and you can always follow up as it gets a little bit closer to the date if you haven't heard back about a request. But in my experience, it can't hurt to pitch earlier. I think that the worst thing is when someone who works at a PR company is getting a ton of last minute requests from people like the day before the show. There's just no way that they're going to be able to accommodate those. And it's just a little thoughtless considering how much time and effort goes into producing a fashion week show. In terms of how to word your email, listen, I love a good pitch email, but Fashion Week is the time to be super direct and get to the point. 
The good news is when you are sending a New York Fashion Week pitch email, people know what you want. They know you want to come attend the show. So that intention is clear. Your goal with this email should be to convince them why you should come. So in the subject line for every single pitch email that I send for New York Fashion Week, I always make the subject line New York Fashion Week request. I put the season and I put my name. That way, again, there's no confusion about what I'm asking for and people can easily flag my email if they see it coming in with a New York Fashion Week subject line. Here are some of the key points that I always try to hit in my Fashion Week pitch emails. First, I say hello and share that I'm writing to request attendance for that brand's Fashion Week presentation. I waste no time explaining what my plans for covering Fashion Week are, so I like to say that I'll be covering Fashion Week across my social media platforms. I tell them the total number of combined unique users that I reach, so I add up all of my followers across these different platforms, and I try to link the three biggest ones that I'm planning to cover Fashion Week on. I also always try to include an example of my Fashion Week coverage from the previous season so that they can see what type of content I create, whether that's a TikTok video or a blog post or any other content. I also like to state my credibility, so I say that I have been a blogger and content creator for over 10 years and that I'm also a former magazine editor because that does tend to go a long way in the fashion world. And I also be sure to mention if I have attended the show in the past. Attending a show in the past doesn't necessarily guarantee admittance to the show that following season, but it can't hurt to mention that you have been there before. So as you can see, super short, super clear and direct about what I want and how I plan to cover the show, and that's it. If I don't hear back after a week, I will send a follow-up email. Just keep in mind, the person that you're sending this request email to, their inbox is probably insane during this time period. So always be gracious, be patient, and if it's meant to be, it will be. Let's move on to talk about preparing for Fashion Week. I think that it's important to plan out what type of content you're planning to create during New York Fashion Week. Some ideas for content you can create are day in the life mini vlogs. You can create daily outfit videos and talk through what you're wearing. You can also do styling videos. You can do get ready with me videos. You can do behind the scenes videos. And I think this is also a great time to collaborate with other content creators who will also be in New York for Fashion Week. When it comes to your outfits and what to wear for New York Fashion Week, I really just have two big pieces of advice, which is to be yourself and let your personal style shine because that's what this is all about. And also to be comfortable and dress for the weather because if you are back and forth in between shows, walking a lot, you're not gonna wanna be in skimpy dresses or uncomfortable outfits or things that are pulling at you at weird angles and it's just not gonna be worth it at the end of the day. September Fashion Week is usually sweltering for no reason and February Fashion Week is usually freezing. So make sure that you're dressed for the occasion, but dressed in your own style. On that note, I have been captured by street style photographers before and appeared in different street style roundups. So I wanted to share my three biggest tips for getting noticed by street style photographers. My first tip for getting noticed by street style photographers is to try to incorporate some of the seasonal trends into your looks. So you don't have to be wearing a trend from head to toe, but it could be something small like a color that that is currently trending or an accessory. Our fashion director at Nylon used to say to us, if you see something three times during fashion week, three is a trend. So you can keep an eye out for other showgoers to see what people are wearing and know that these street style photographers have probably been given the instruction by whatever outlets they are covering for to look for different trends that they see, whether it is street style related or whether they are covering the shows themselves. My second tip is to think about what's fun for photographers to photograph. So that might be bold colors, that might be kind of quirky accessories, that might be sequins or feathers or interesting textures and details. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and be a giant rainbow peacock or anything, but it does mean that maybe if you're choosing a more neutral outfit, you can choose a neutral outfit with a really interesting fabric or a really fun pop of color in an accessory. And my last tip for getting noticed by street style photographers is to get in ahead of time. Start looking on Instagram and TikTok for street style photographers who are going to be covering Fashion Week 
and start following them and interacting with their content because they might go click into your profile, recognize you, and you have a chance of being photographed during fashion week. In your planning, you will also want to look out for where you can go between shows. So if a lot of your shows are central to downtown Manhattan, try to find a coffee shop or somewhere that you can go in between your shows. One other thing that I really like is a website called Day Use, and it allows you to book a hotel room just for the day. So picture from the hours of 10 to 6, you have a hotel room in downtown Manhattan where you can go to recharge your phone, use your own private bathroom, answer some emails on your laptop, and leave your outfits if you need to change looks throughout the day. I honestly think this is kind of genius and you could even split the cost with a friend or two to make it more worth it. I would also recommend planning ahead which bags you're planning to carry for fashion week and also packing things accordingly like extra batteries and chargers for your phone, any, you know, extra mini deodorant maybe, breath mints, tampons, whatever you think you might need. Definitely plan ahead what you want to be bringing around in your bag so that you're not like the day of trying to quickly figure out what to throw in and forgetting anything that might be important. Okay, you've sent your pitches, you've got your outfits ready, and now it's time to actually go to the shows. Before you head to a show, make sure that you have a confirmation email from the PR agency. Some of them will also have QR codes on them, especially for venues like Spring Studios, to make it easy for people to check you in once you arrive to a show. I always try to suggest getting to shows early. I would say typically runway shows start 15 to 20 minutes after the time that they say they're going to, but it can't hurt you to get in early and I'm going to talk about why. First of all, you can network once you're in there. Do you have any idea how many amazing people get to all be in a room together at the same time for a fashion week show? Especially if you don't live in New York and you're visiting from out of town, this is just such an awesome opportunity to network with like-minded people, to talk about fashion, and to exchange Instagram handles with some really interesting people. The other benefit to getting there early is it gives you a chance to kind of scope out the room. You can figure out if you have been assigned a seat, what the best camera angle is for you to capture any content that you want to. And you can also figure out what your exit game plan is because when everyone stands up at the end of a show all at once, you don't want to be wondering where the exit is. You want to be able to walk there directly so you can get to your next event on time. If your ticket says standing on it, that means you are invited into the runway show, but you don't have an assigned seat. So I do recommend getting there early if you have a standing ticket on the chance that once the standing ticket holders are let in, that there are extra seats available. Usually standing gets let in right before the show is going to start. And if you see an open seat or a PR person is directing you to feel free to take a seat that hasn't been filled, you can absolutely use this opportunity. This has happened to me so many times where I've had standing tickets, which may feel a little bit like, ah, oh, was, am I worth it? Like, should I really be here? I'm just standing, but it is so worth it because nine times out of 10, I do end up getting a seat. And sometimes they're good seats too. Sometimes they're even in the first or second row. So you never know what will happen. Don't let a standing ticket discourage you. Just be strategic, show up early, be polite. And if you are offered a seat, absolutely take it. If you find yourself at the start of fashion week with not really as many shows or invitations as you were expecting, I would definitely hop into some blogging and influencer Facebook groups and just say, hey, I'm here in New York attending fashion week. If anyone has any shows that they can't attend that they'd like me to cover on their behalf, I'd be happy to. And what you can do is get in touch with any content creators who maybe are double booked and can't attend events and you can go and attend those shows on their behalf. And in my experience, as long as I've offered to send them some footage from the show, they are more than happy to make that exchange. And then I end up getting to go to an event that I wouldn't have been invited to otherwise. Not to mention, Fashion Week is not just about shows anymore, it is about events. So keep an eye out in influencer Facebook groups for any Fashion Week events that are happening. You can also go onto Eventbrite and see if there are any events listed there during Fashion Week. And you can also always create your own event. Get a group of content creators or influencers who you know are all going to be in the city at the same time and plan to do a group dinner or a photo shoot or something fun like that. Let's go over a few tips for creating content during Fashion Week. One of the biggest tips I can give is to either shoot your Fashion Week outfits in advance so that you can just post them the day of with no worry about whether or not you're going to have time to capture your content, 
or to find a photographer who will book many sessions throughout Fashion Week. So this is also a really great way to meet a photographer near an agreed upon location, get your content done, and usually they also have a pretty quick turnaround time for getting the photos back to you because they know that it is timely, they know you want to be able to post as quickly as possible. I think not having a game plan for who is going to capture your outfits or where you want to take your photos can leave you feeling a little bit rushed and disorganized the day of, so as much as you can plan that in advance, I would definitely suggest doing so. Another tip is to make sure you just give yourself a ton of options to work with, especially at runway shows, which happen so quickly. Just keep shooting content, take more photos than you think you need, take more videos than you think you need, and you can always edit things later. The Wi-Fi at Spring Studios isn't that good anyway, so posting things in real time is probably not going to happen. If anything, you can just be a few hours behind or at the end of the day when you get home, then you can use that as an opportunity to create and upload all of your content. I would also recommend capturing content in both vertical and horizontal formats. You just never know where you might want to use that footage later. Maybe you want B-roll for a YouTube video. Maybe you want to turn something into an Instagram reel that you thought you were just going to use for a vlog. So I would recommend doing both horizontal and vertical filming and also photos. I always forget to take horizontal photos, but I usually like to write a fashion week blog post and I do need a horizontal header image for those posts. And finally, let's go over what to do after you have attended a runway show, a presentation, or an event during Fashion Week. The first thing to do, like I mentioned, is to edit and post your content. So you might do this at the end of the day, you might do it the next morning, but typically within Fashion Week, time really does matter. Things go by so quickly and a designer kind of does have their 15 minutes, so to speak. So any shows or events you attend, I would try to get content up within 24 hours. I know it's a tight turnaround, but that's kind of one of the things that comes along with attending New York Fashion Week so that you can share this with your audience in a timely fashion and make sure that they are seeing content from you because if they're seeing it from other influencers and not you, they might be wondering where your coverage is. And if you do create any content featuring brands who invited you to events or runway shows, definitely be sure to share it with them. When they are looking to do Fashion Week recaps and show their bosses and their team what coverage was created, what press was generated out of the events, they want to have as many different examples as possible to show them. So definitely be sure to send it along. And if you were invited to a show, to an event, to even a dinner of three people during New York Fashion Week, I would send a note to say thank you. You'd be surprised how many people run into Fashion Week, try to attend a ton of shows, and the people who work so hard to put on these events never hear so much as a thank you. It will go a really, really long way to say that, and it takes almost no time on your end. I would also suggest setting a reminder in your calendar from three months after Fashion Week ends, so maybe in early December, to send these brands and PR agencies just a hello and check-in email. I think one of the biggest things you can do to show you care and build relationships with PR agencies is to check in and show you care when there's nothing in it for you. If you want more tips about how to do this, I actually have a whole blog post about building relationships with PR agencies as an influencer so I will leave a link to that down below in the description box. And finally, I do have a playlist of other Fashion Week videos. I do have some vlogs from over the years, some videos showing me preparing and getting ready for New York Fashion Week, so I'll be sure to link that playlist so you can go check out some of my other videos. Wow, okay, that was a lot of information, I know. If you have any questions or there's something I didn't address in this video that you were wondering about, please leave me a comment down below. I always do my best to read and reply to as many of those as I am able to. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I post new videos every Tuesday, all with tips for content creators and influencers, so I think you'll really enjoy the rest of my videos if you liked this one. And you can also turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever I upload new content. Give me a thumbs up down below if you liked this video, and until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will see you in my next video. Bye!